one second. Hey, everybody, it's Kara with the She's the Owner podcast, and we are still continuing with our having the boys on our series. Um, it's been pretty amazing. We've had some really incredible chats. And so today we have uh, Bill Sheltima, and he's, we just connected through Facebook. His, I've been reading a lot of your posts lately, and they are like, I've seen over and over again, people commenting, you, you write straight to my heart and it always touches me super deep inside and all these yeah. beautiful things. And that's the truth. And I think once I discovered you, I, I spent a lot of time reading um, your posts and holy cow, does it ever <laughs> resonate? And it's, mm. it's like the first time in a, maybe not ever, but first time in a, in a bit where I've seen posts that um, a woman can relate to mm. where a man's understanding it. So mm, tell us yeah. a little bit about yourself. Tell us about, you know, what you're doing. Um, I know you're an author and coach, I'm assuming as well. So yeah. talk a little bit about what you do and, and then we'll get into it. Sure. I am a relationship coach and author. I've written a book called Words Women Love, which speaks to what you're feeling with the post I, I put in Facebook. Um, because the book is really there. It's there to help men, but women really resonate with it. and that is part of what I do with my coaching is helping men learn how to express themselves in a sincere and heart centered place. Um, I also help men wake up. That's the real big part of what I do for men is begin to that journey of waking up. And I help women find, regain their honor, um, their self worth, learning how to set really clear boundaries is real as they relate to relationships. And help women really begin to understand what why men are are the way they are why they do some of the things they do why they think the way they think and so that's you know pretty much what i do so thank you for that um and i was yeah. reading so I, I always like to get the sort of origin story because let's be honest you men don't generally come out this way <laughs> there <laughs> there's a few steps before yeah. um but you were you were married and you were separated I, I think i read and um so tell us a little bit maybe there's a couple of things i want to dig into but maybe tell sure. tell the listeners how you came <clears throat> to understand that this was not what you this current version of you how you got to this current version of you and what you were like maybe beforehand when you woke yeah. up when you woke up yeah yeah well my marriage ended about six years ago um and it was it became very dead and there was mm. just a lot of unhappiness on both sides both contributing of course um and it just came came to that place i know that you did a post today about you know about ending of a relationship mm -hmm. And a lot of what I spoke on, I think, was to that when I commented on that, because I do know that I wasn't awake at the time. Mm. I was a spiritual person, but I don't think I had a full awakening, a real full understanding of who I was as a man. And, <clears throat> and so when the marriage ended, I had to make some really big decisions, or I chose to make big de uh, decisions, and they were the biggest one was what kind of man do I want to be? Like who, not so much who am I, but what kind of man do I want to be? And am I ready to take that journey to become that man? If I'm not, if I don't see myself that way now, then how do I get there? And am I, am I ready to take that journey? And I also said to myself that I don't care how messy or hard it gets. I want to know the truth. And I want to have, I want to understand not only myself, I want to understand women in a much deeper way and relationships so that when I do meet somebody, I can be the absolute best man I can possibly be at that stage of my journey. So that's how that began. Wow. And that, so the thing that I find so interesting is like some, some men seem to understand and, and it's intuitive, right? They kind of say, oh, I'm not the man that I want to be. What about the people or the men who are, are still really oblivious to that fact? Because there's, you know, the, a, a large percentage of men are still blaming the woman and the woman is blaming the man. That's just what we do. Do you have any, are there any sort of triggers or anything that you maybe could, that you picked up on well before you started your transformation that you could say to a, a man, <clears throat> excuse me, who is like going through it now where he might say, oh, that's a bit of a red flag. Maybe I need to look at that. Um, 
when I, for myself, I was really questioning, my heart was going, was hardening. Mm. And I, I was questioning, why is this happening? And why am I not doing anything about it? Which scared mm. me. I thought, you know, typically I would want to try and fix it, but we'd already gone to counseling a couple of times. Didn't help. And it just got to that point that it's like, you know, I, I find that I don't care right now because I can't see any way to fix this or any way to resolve the issues that were there. And there's some really deep issues. <clears throat> and I also, because of the divorce, I was raised in a way that divorce is totally wrong. Mm. And so I'm looking at that whole 23 year period of my life going, what the hell happened? Like what decisions were, were was I making that got me to this point that now I'm questioning everything. And I think that for a lot of men, they have to go through severe pain before mm. they wake up and go, I, I got to, I got to do something. Something is, I, I'm not happy with this. This is not good. What do I need to do? And so some men need to be broken in that mm. way through our life crisis before they even wake up because for a woman to talk to him, he's not going to listen or he would have listened by now. Right. And to hear it from another man could possibly help, but until it actually happens in a deep, deeper place within himself where he really feels it. And then he begins that journey from his own desire and, and will to make that, those changes. It won't happen otherwise, really. Because there are enough how self-help books out there. There are enough right. therapists or, you know, men like Tony Robbins and other men that speak on things like that, but men still aren't flocking to change. So obviously there's something else that needs to take place and mm -hmm. i believe it's they have to be their ego needs to be completely obliterated and crushed through a life experience where they they have nowhere to turn and they have to be real and honest with themselves for once in their life that's heavy because that that's an <laughs> uncomfortable like even for me it's uncomfortable to have to uh, to do that and i think you know there's a lot of especially young men right now who there's it's kind of there's a bit of a influx there's the older generation like the and i say older but like in their 40s and up who've been raised mostly by i would say wounded or toxic masculine men who have taught them crying is bad crying is weak vulnerability is weak all those type of things and then our this generation is we're hopefully it seems like we're raising sons differently than than they were raised and that's encouraging mm. but what do you think is at the core of it like when you see a man who's let's say in his 40s or 50s is it just fear of changing or because i feel like men when you if they've heard it somewhere that there a change needs to happen is it just simply fear or like you're saying like their ego just needs to have a shit kicking before they really wake up well there's a lot of stuff in the way for them to really even see it and fear is a part of it because we fear what we don't understand. Right. Um, and it's uncomfortable to go there. So we just don't go there. Mm. Um, but also you talked about boys being raised by men that weren't complete men themselves. So I can include myself in that. And many men, we didn't receive, I call them the four pillars of greatness. That's love, empathy, encouragement, and patience. We didn't receive those from our fathers because they didn't receive them from their fathers. So we have a lot of fathers that are very impatient with their sons. They don't know how to show empathy when the boy's hurting. They don't know right. how to show love in a, in a healthy, powerful way, you know, man to son or man to man, male to male. And encouragement, how to encourage. And so a lot of boys were left with nothing. Mm -hmm. And they replaced it with bravado, you know, becoming alpha becoming stronger in the way they thought they had to be strong outwardly where inwardly they're totally wrecked and hurting mm -hmm. and they don't understand why they don't have the emotional intelligence to articulate what they're feeling they don't understand what they're feeling and one of the things that i'm always saying is that how can a man be himself if he doesn't know who he is and if he doesn't know who he is who is he being like who is he really then because if he hasn't learned who he is by doing the journey and actually digging into right. himself and un beginning to understand why do I feel this way? Why do I have these triggers? Where are they coming from? Who do, getting back to the kind of man that I want to be, who do I even want to be? 
Right. And so if they aren't asking these questions, then they're kind of, and they're just a ghost of who they could be. Yeah. And I think, so when you, when you talk about love, empathy, encouragement, and patience, like, so three of those out, out of the four and encouragement, I would say one, but those are, you know, some of the things that I talk about on the show through my content is, and mm. that's the feminine energy. That's the, and, and it's interesting because it's almost like, you know, I wish we could all have a blow horn and just start walking around and saying vulnerability is sexy guys. Like, believe me because it is it's like and where where it ends up being this beautiful thing is when i can unpack what i need to unpack with you mm -hmm. in a way that because if you're a vulnerable man or you understand vulnerability then your reception of that unpacking is way different mm -hmm. than a man who doesn't understand vulnerability or how to be vulnerable mm -hmm. and and then our relationship can be stronger for it if i'm just venting or talking or whatever and the man doesn't understand vulnerability then all of a sudden they're trying to fix it they're not just sitting in it so talk a bit about that obsession of men to fix things and we do talk about that quite a bit and I understand it but I'd love for it to hear your take on when a man who maybe hasn't gone through the journey yet of finding himself mm -hmm. here's a woman talking their immediate response is to blah 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 blah, blah. fix 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 and we're like holy yeah. shit stop talking just hold space well, for me but yeah. yeah we're raised that way mm -hmm. to fix that becomes our mode of operation for the most part to fix things to get things done to to create to build and when there's a problem problem solve and so mm -hmm. we're, it's ingrained in us as young boys that their fathers because our fathers were doing the same thing so that's the example we were shown and that's kind of how we become that way and I do talk about, I do help men understand holding space. I don't know if you've seen any of my videos about holding space. Um, I, I think I did see, I've, I've read some posts about it, which again, I was like, oh, exactly. You're in my head. Get out of my head, Bill. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I have a way of doing that, don't I? Yep. Um, yeah. So, and that's really a lot of what it is. Men just have no clue how to hold space for a woman when a woman is going through her stuff and, and trying to you know, express her vulnerability, her emoting and expression, and he's trying to problem solve. He already begins in his mind before he even speaks how to yeah. problem solve this, this woman that's in front of him. He doesn't know how to just sit and remain quiet and just allow her to be because that, in a way, he, he feels that it's taking away his power. His, it's a weakness in a sense mm. because I can't, I want to fix and then you don't want me to fix. Well, what am I supposed to do then? They don't know what right. to do with it. Um, but if they really understood that whole concept and the whole idea of holding space for a woman, if they really understood what that does for the woman and in return for him, they would be much more willing to learn how to do it and be there in a more present way. And that's the other thing. Men have a hard time being present in a relationship. They're very present in themselves, in their own day, in their own daily routine. Really hard to break out of that and be there present for a woman in their life. So two questions then. So um, let's, let's actually just, I'll, I'll ask you that one before we slip past it. But what does it mean for, I, I understand what it means for a woman to be present, we know how to be present for each other as women, for sure. So if you, if, what do you tell your clients or, or people that you talk to, this is what being present looks like, or this is, because I know holding space is a big term right now. Mm -hmm. So maybe explain exactly what you mean to somebody again, you know, very new to it, doesn't understand the concepts. What would you say to somebody that you're coaching brand new about holding space and about being present? Um, holding space and being present is really something you're giving and doing for somebody else. Um, it's complete acceptance of the person. And it's, it's laying down your agenda, your motives in that moment, and setting those aside and holding up the other person so that that person can uh, work through whatever it is they're working through. And being present would be, it's really having focus. It's really your heart and mind is on that person, really. 
Yeah. And I think like one of our biggest, I would say challenges in this day and age is the phone. Right. So, and that's huge. Like we, I, my husband and I get into riffs about that all the time. He's, he thinks he can continue to scroll when I'm like, hello, I just need your focus. Like look me in my eyes when I'm talking and then, then I can under, then I feel like we're here together. Yeah. Otherwise I, you know, I know he's distracted or whatever. And I, and I know like, it's hard for guys. It really is. Like, I understand that it's difficult, but that's, you know, that's part of what, what I want to talk about in terms of masculinity and women, because this is why I started the podcast. We started it or I started it because as a female business owner, there's a lot of masculine energy in us. It has to be there to get shit done and to move the needle and do all the things we need to do. <laughs> mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. we're showing up that way in our personal lives. So do you, I mean, I'm sure you see a lot of it, but especially because I find that a lot of women seek out coaching more often than men. Mm, that's for sure. And so do you see a woman, you know, are they coming through the door and you're like, whoa, this, this woman's super in her masculine. Um, what, yeah. Like tell, tell me a bit about what you see out in the world in this, mm, okay. in this area. Before I do, I will add to the whole thing about holding space and presence is I tell men, put the phone away, turn it off, put it away, shut up and don't say anything. This is not about you at all. And to be very clear on that. Um, most, of, to be honest, I don't have too many women that come through as far as the masculine. I have okay. an awful lot of women coming in that want to have a clearer understanding of their, you might find this odd, their sexuality. Um, uh, Most of them don't have an issue with their masculine. They kind of have an idea. They get it because they've already, a lot of them have already done a lot of work on themselves. Okay. But they do seek to hear from a a man. They want to hear from a man, an awakened man to get a sense of what, he what i might see going on in them because we're all we're all in coaching we're all seeking clarity so that when we make Mm. decisions we know they're the right decisions right right so what are some of the things that you see then if a woman's coming to like you you do i think i read that you you had clients that had actually discovered a different sexuality or preference um Maybe it wasn't, I thought it was you, but so talk a little about like, so they're coming to you and they're unclear about what they want, whether they're, you know, straight, gay or that type of thing, or is it awakening Uh, their sexuality within the relationship? Talk a bit about that. Yeah. It's about the awakening. It's about that journey of um, allowing that sexuality to be expressed in the relationship. Um, And what I will say to the masculine is, I think a few of them that I've, I've coached recently want less of the masculine sexuality expressed. They want mm-hmm. more of the feminine and they want to make that shift. So they are more divine feminine expressed through their sexuality. Okay. And so they're, they're a little, there's a bit of confusion. They want to, they, they want to understand how to do that. And I basically, Tell them the beautiful thing is because we have male and feminine energy within all each of us do, and once you begin to understand the two and how they work together and how they flow, you can bring one forward as you feel that there's at that desire. So sometimes it may be more masculine, and other times it'll be more feminine. Um, and so that's more or less where I help women. Some of it is with. He is not interested in having sex. What do I do? What am I right. supposed to do? He just doesn't want to, or he's he has porn addiction, or mm-hmm. um, he wants to have, uh, you know, threesomes, or he wants he just out there, right? The fantasies kind of thing. And I don't know what to do because I feel I'm being neglected. I'm being overlooked. I'm I'm not the number. I'm not the woman in his life like we mm-hmm. were at the beginning. And so I help women kind of work through those types of issues. So what are some of the reasons that happens? Cause that's very common too. I mean, that's, you know, and I would, I would have thought that, I mean, obviously, I mean, not obviously, but maybe his needs aren't being met and her needs aren't being met, et cetera. But what do you, what would you say to a client or woman that came to you and said, he just doesn't want to sleep with me at all. He's mm-hmm. doing this, that, and the other, but the bottom line is 
we're not having sex anymore? What's, what's the answer? I know there's probably a million, but give me sort of like the most common thing that you would equate that to. Well, I would, I would talk about what could be likely happening with him. So she has a, a, a bit of an understanding and doesn't take everything upon herself because a lot of women will think it's me. I'm not good enough. I'm not doing this. I right. Doing that. And then they start to blame themselves and judge themselves when really it isn't them. The problem with men is if they don't know who they are, they can't bring to the table what they don't have. They can't bring right. to the bedroom what they don't have. And that's what happens with men. And so men think I need variety. Therefore I'm not feeling the variety and excitement with my wife. I need, I need another hit. And mm -hmm. so they turn the pornography thinking that that's it or another woman, or they engage in conversations that they shouldn't be with other women thinking that's what they need. When an awakened man knows that if he begins to feel that way, he just needs to dig deeper in himself. And then the two of them can dig deeper together in their intimacy and their connection and their bonding. And because there are so many men don't understand how many, I, I could say how many different women are within a woman, but the different expressions a woman has not only sexually, but just in all areas of her life, yes. right? Creative, creatively um, as, as just a woman and men have never taken the time or a lot of men haven't taken the time to tap into that. To realize I have I have all the women that I need in this one woman. Yeah, but we're a lot. They, yeah, and they don't understand. They think that they they forget that that raging emotion a woman has is actually a good thing because when that's in the bedroom, that's what he's seeking. He doesn't realize that it's that's all the same energy, it's all energy coming from her. Right. And it could be directed, it could be, it could be nurtured. And that's part of the holding space because when he can do that for her while holding space, then he will get the things that he's seeking and desiring from the woman. But he hasn't, a lot of men haven't made that connection. They haven't realized, okay, if I'm this way and I'm doing, and I'm sincerely holding space and I'm doing this, then this is what I'll get out of it. They, they don't think far enough, you know, right. they get too frustrated, they get triggered and they don't, and because they, again, they don't understand. And a lot of it comes right back to themselves. They just don't know who they are. And they think, they don't think that they are complete enough. And so they seek it elsewhere. When they have everything they need is within themselves. Right. They just need to do the journey. <laughs> so I'm writing all these questions while you're talking because there's more and more is <laughs> coming up. Yeah, um, I said a lot there. So do you think that you both need to be like both need to be interested in the journey or do you think a woman can go through the journey with you, let's say in higher coach and do events and reading and all the growth that she's doing, but the man do nothing in that area in terms of personal development. Do you think there's a chance for that to happen or to, to work itself out or cause often you'll see, and just friends that I have and all that sort of thing, they'll go to the events or they'll read the books, they'll do the coaching, but the husband's like, I'm not getting into any of that stuff. I'm not into it. And so she's growing, she's doing all this stuff mm. and he's just kind of like, man, uh, you, that's nonsense. What, how do you handle that? How does, does that ever work out? Or I know we'll say if you become the change, eventually they start to lean into it with you, but some just don't. So what kind of, what's your thought? What are your thoughts on that? Uh, yeah. If you have one that's growing and raising, I mean, we know that as you raise your, your vibration, the people mm -hmm. that you are with, they start to fall away they start to become a wider divide, the greater divide keeps increasing. So the chances of that get harder because as she's developing and growing, her boundaries are gonna become more clear. What she puts allows in her life, what she doesn't allow in her life, what works for her and what doesn't work for her. And so it's gonna create tension if he's not interested. But it's very selfish because it's like then she has to do everything based on his needs and never her needs all like it ends up being always because then what the only time they're going to actually do things together is stuff that he agrees on it'll never right. be on 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 in her favor so it's majorly unbalanced in every area and so i mean whether it works whether he realizes he's losing her and then he wakes up is that the right motive to change, to keep somebody, really? 
do you think? It'd be the ego dropping its <laughs> egoness, maybe sometimes. That could be. And that's, yeah. And if he meets the right kind of people that could speak the right knowledge and truth to him, then he could definitely, you know, get moving on that. Um, but you should never change for a person or change to keep a person. That, right. that, that's not the, that's not the right motive. It has to be something deeper. It has to be born within. It really does. Um, because for myself, I wasn't changing to, to try to keep the marriage. I knew that was over. It was like, who am I going to be? Who, what mm-hmm. kind of man am I wanting to be? That's really what I, that's when a man really is going to start to do the changes and go through that process and that journey. Um, and so, yeah, to, to answer the question, I don't, I've never seen it work. Sadly. Yeah. I mean, it is too bad. Um, And it's hard, I think, too, for women because we're such nurturers. We want, we're always Mm -hmm. like, this is really good. Why can't you just like, trust me, this is going to change us. It's so amazing. And, you know, some guys are like, no, I don't know. Yeah. Um, So if you, if you, if I was to ask you what the number one thing that you see couples, let's say, struggling over when it comes to masculine feminine energy. I mean, I, I know that one of the biggest things is they don't, they're not actually aware of these energies within themselves and they just Mm -hmm. think whatever. And I always say it's the head and the heart. Um, if there was a, a kind of maybe the top two or three things that you see couples breaking up over without, you know, I mean, money, all that sort of thing. But like when it comes to masculine feminine, what might, what would you say is one of the things that you see most often as a complaint Resistance. of couples? Mm. Resistance. Yeah. I think it's a big one. We, we push back, we resist the change. We resist anything that we don't understand because uh, it, it's scary. It's unknown territory. It's very unfamiliar. And so we resist it. We, sh- we shut down to it. We shut off to it. You know, it's a, it's a fervent no, definitely not. We're not doing that or we're not going there. Or I'm not getting involved with that. It's resistance. And it can, and even in the, um, a man has strong self-will. So when he feels an emotion coming, he'll be very, very, capable of pushing that down going absolutely not i'm not going there with this emotion i'm a man and the way he go, that's just the way it is they shut themselves men are really good at shutting themselves down to we are too i think too we become a lot better at that which is yeah. part of the problem right yeah. like when we're in our head or a masculine mm. we definitely i've done it probably three times today you know <laughs> i've been like there's yeah. moments where i want to let something out and i'm like no I've got yeah. a blog to write. I've got shit to do. I don't have time for this. But mm-hmm. um, I've seen a lot of women who are, but again, they're in their masculine. They're able to, to put that, their mind to work and not the heart. Mm-hmm. Um, but it comes out eventually. Does it yeah. not? I mean, in some yeah. way it's coming out. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. That, it will. Yeah. You know? So what's one of the, your favorite things about coaching, your coaching life and What's one of your least favorite things about your coaching life? Favorite thing? Um, I just love it when, when the client has like an aha or a breakthrough. Um, I had that with Ken. I don't know if you saw the video from Ken. Uh, I no, that. I have I have seen it on your wall, but I did not watch it yet. That, that was a 20-minute initial consult. Actually, sorry, I did see that. And he was so jacked about it. He was so he, jacked about it. Yes, I yeah. did see that. That I, I didn't I didn't really do a lot. I just I just observed and I spoke spoke into his life a couple things and it blew his mind. That kind of thing is just I get so stoked over that. And then when I see people that are I won't say that they're some of them are clients, some of them aren't that share my posts, that comment. Um, that really supports what I'm doing. It really validate. I mean, we all love validation. Mm-hmm. I don't necessarily need it because I know I'm good at what I do, but it is nice to know that you're seen. We'd like to be mm-hmm. seen, accepted. <clears throat> so yeah, when, when a, a client says, I, oh my God, I can't believe what you're saying. I had that this week, no, last week I had a, a coaching and I, I presented some ideas to her regarding her sexuality and they were abstract and very out there. And she was, Oh my gosh, that's amazing. I've never thought of that. 
that that I can see that helping me shift. She wanted to shift, and um, it, sometimes I love it because I love it because I have I believe I have a gift of a deeper insight or understanding of women. I'm not sure where that came or how I got that, but obviously my writing speaks to that because mm-hmm. you've mentioned it. And I love that I have that ability and that I can speak something that helps. I think that's amazing. That's what I love about, about my coaching. It's really serving and helping and, and yep. seeing people become free or, or having that deeper clarity and go, I know what I need to do now. This is amazing. Cause I don't ever tell my co- clients what to do. That's not my goal. I'm just there to present, mm-hmm. you know, thoughts and, and ways to look at things from a different perspective you know, show them their blind spots. I ask them the hard questions that really trigger them to think deeper. And then, but they love it. Mm-hmm. They, they absolutely love it. I, my, I tell my, I have an incredible coach and um, she, yeah, like she sees things and she'll, she always says, you're Carrie, you're so, she's got a very beautiful Polish accent. It's really cute. But she's always like, Carrie, you, you're advanced. You know, you're so advanced and da, 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 da. Cause I've been doing a lot of the work, but every time she catches a blind spot and I was like, shit, that was there. (laughs) Dang it. But it, it's good. I mean, and, and once you start working through the subconscious work, um, I was telling my daughter yesterday that, you know, once it's conscious is when you start to speak it. Mm -hmm. So when Mm -hmm. you start to speak differently about your relationship, about your feminine divine, all of those things, you know, that it's coming from back to the front now. And that's where really huge shifts can happen, but it is uncomfortable. I grew up in a, as a very masculine energy woman, because yeah. I came from trauma and if I wasn't in charge and I wasn't delegating and doing all the things that the masculine can do, wounded masculine, mm-hmm. then yeah. there were trouble, there was problems. And so I learned at 10 years old, this is what I have to be. And then I grew up that way. Mm-hmm. And now I'm 44. And it was only until last year where I was like, Ugh, this is gross. <laughs> this doesn't feel good. Yeah. But I didn't know what I didn't know. Yeah, exactly. I just assumed this was the way I needed to be. And then here's what I think is interesting that happens. It, like when you're talking about for a man where he just needs to, his ego needs to be obliterated before he sees time to change. I think it's that way for us too, because, and it shows up in exhaustion. Mm. Total. I have four daughters. Three of them mm. are adults. Two of them are entrepreneurs. The, th- the little one wants to be one too. I'm, and it's, it, it so I'm busy. I have two companies, so <laughs> podcast, but it shows up as exhaustion that you right. feel like no one's helping you, but then you need to dig deep and see that you don't let anybody help you. And mm. that's, that's an uncomfortable conversation to have with yourself because you can sort of piss and moan all the time about how, how come he doesn't help me? How come nobody does this? How come, how come, how, well, you've got a perimeter around you. That's so thick. Mm. No one's getting in. Mm-hmm. in the wounded masculine and so it's not until you start to like dig and yeah. figure out oh i'm actually not letting anybody help me that's yeah. the problem <laughs> there might be people who are trying um mm-hmm. so last question for you um so maybe make it a good one <laughs> 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 um but what are some of the ways that you can help a woman shift like maybe three things that you might say to somebody you know, who you, who you really want them to honor that divine feminine in them. What are some of the ways that you would little tactics maybe that you tell them to do on a daily basis or any kind of rituals or anything like that, Mm. that might help a woman shift from masculine to feminine? Well, a couple of women that I coached, I did this with them. Um, I, because they both wanted to, they had a real strong desire to be more feminine. And so I, so I told both of them, as the masculine side of yourself, you're, you're like the Joan of Arc and you need to shift and see yourself as the queen. Mm. Um, but they had thought that they would lose power by doing right. that shift. But I, I expressed to them that the queen still demands reverence. She still demands respect and honor by the people around her. And she can be powerful and strong and yet still be very feminine and beautiful. And, and I even went to the point of begin to change your wardrobe even. And the one woman, she grew up in a military background. She was wearing very militant or not militant, very military type 
you know, pantsuits and things like that, very more masculine. I said, that will start to reinforce mm. how you can begin to see yourself. And I wrote her a life script that she could say to herself as well to help her begin to speak that and to hear herself saying that. Because I do tell my clients that, you know, we do a script, they would record it to themselves. They would record it and then they would be able to play it back. So they hear their voice saying it to themselves. It's very powerful. Mm -hmm. And to say, you know, I'm my time as Joan of Arc has come to a close and I'm now stepping into my queen, my queenship. And this is who I am. I still demand respect. I see power in my femininity and I don't have to see that as a weakness. It's just as powerful. It just comes in a different form now. Right. That's one of the things that I do, I have done. Um, another woman I helped, um, this gets a little more intimate now, um, struggling with masculine sexual energy, wanted to be in more of a feminine masculine sex, or feminine sexual energy. So my advice to her was that when you are self-pleasuring to be very aware of whether you're feeling your masculine or feminine side and to allow the feminine side to rise during that time to become more acquainted with it and to receive it and accept it and let that flow and to not push it away um, and to really um, allow that to work through her. And she thought that was amazing. Um, so that would, that was another one. Um, so how, let me just ask a, ask you there for a second though. How would she know? How would a woman or how would I know if I'm in my masculine energy? Listen, well, listen I told you we're going to talk about everything, <laughs> <laughs> but I like, I sort of like, as I'm thinking, I'm trying, I'm sort of thinking I could, I could feel my way around that pun intended. Ha ha. But mm -hmm. really what, how would, how would a woman know if she was in her divine feminine during self-pleasure versus more of a masculine energy? Like well, what would the difference be? The energy during that, during the time that she's doing that, the self-pleasuring, um, what kind of emotion she's having. Okay. Um, and what kind of visuals that might be going along with that as well. And also how, how the touch is happening, what kind of touch is taking place. Right. Like softer and gentler or more aggressive, let's say. Um, so I think those, um, that can be a very, it can be very healing, but also really allow a woman to really become more in touch with her feminine side, because that would be more of the slower, softer touching. Right. And, and where usually, you know, it, the masculine, it's more like aggressive and more quickly, more. Yeah. It's like, up. get it, get it done. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Where this is more of a, and it's, it's an honoring. It's a very honoring and deeper emotion. I'm going to gather. I, w I would say for a woman, I'm not yep. a woman, so, but. Um, no, it is. And when you, when you explain it, I, it now, and then that's part of why I asked you to explain it because <laughs> women might be like, what is he talking about? Matt? Like what? <laughs> but yeah. it's, there's like, th I think the difference is, and you know, this, I'll say it how I'm going to say it, but knocking one out yeah. where you're just like, mm -hmm. get in there, get out. I just need to have an orgasm, call it a day yeah. versus lock your door for an hour and a half, got mm. some candles lit. And this is like an, an experience versus mm -hmm. just something I need to do. Mm. Yeah, so I think really that good... might, that's sort of that how definitely... I would view it. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Because that's, you think of a, a, a feminine woman. I mean, that's, she would be all over that. Mm -hmm. Candles, background music, you know, everything, the mood and, and, all the all the senses are activated. You have you know aroma therapy happening, and 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 the whole the whole intention is to honor and to have a spiritual experience, really, right? right. It, and to really go deep into yourself and to become more acquainted with yourself. And that's and women are that's women right there. Yep. That's feminine. And so when you know you're feeling that, then you know you're in your feminine. Um. 
I do a breath works and it's, I don't do the Wim Hof method, but I do a version of it. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting. The more in touch I get with my divine feminine, the diff, more different that, that breath work experience. And it's about an hour and 45 minute session where mm -hmm. the tribal music starts really high up and then you t you're on this journey. And I'm not even kidding. I've twice now had like an internal orgasm without touching myself at all, yeah. like by simply breathing. And then the, it's a part where it's very, um, it, it, the music softens and it's like, my images are just being a queen in this tribal mm -hmm. sort of setting. And it's mm -hmm. like, nice. it's something happens every time. And it's like, it's, that's a, that's what, that's what being in your feminine means, like just unleashing in that way. And it doesn't, mm -hmm. you know, doesn't that literally hands are beside me. And I'm like, <laughs> first time I was like, wait, I like <laughs> breath work. This is awesome. And then mm. I was like, this won't happen again. And sure enough, it did. And I was like, okay, every <laughs> Sunday morning, I'm going to be doing breath work. But it is, it's beautiful. It's like, but that, that requires really honest, deep digging into admitting that we're not in our feminine yet and, mm -hmm. and being comfortable. Cause it's, if you've been trained or um, conditioned to be in your masculine as a woman, it's mm -hmm. equally uncomfortable for us to go into our divine and to our vulnerability and all that stuff. Like it's, oh. it's disgusting sometimes. Like, mm -hmm. you know, you just like, ugh. and so I, I empathize with the boys for sure with the men. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, so any, is there anything else that you wanted to share with us? And, and I would love to know, um, let people know where they can find you if they want to get in touch with you as well. Um, what else would I like to share? Um, well, so something else I tell women, I, I didn't cover a couple, couple more but I'll just say that, that I tell a woman that um, to be really clear on the kind of relationship they want the kind of man they want in their life if they're seeking a relationship and to know what their what their boundaries are and to honor their boundaries because when a woman and man of course too but when a woman doesn't honor her boundaries she's betraying herself and that can be mm. traumatic um, and the other thing is to give yourself permission um, and, and whatever that looks like that to give yourself permission because so many women have had that taken away from them. You know, they've been in relationships where the man dictates her existence, how she should be um, taken away her identity and, you know, and she's stuck with, you know, a shell of a person. And right. so I tell women, you know, Give yourself permission to say no. Give yourself permission to stand up and to speak your heart. And because there's nothing wrong with that. You've not done anything wrong. And you're just as important and valuable as anybody else in a relationship. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's very, very true. It's beautiful. And I think women are starting to, in, in many areas of existence right now, right? We're not, <clears throat> we're not tolerating what we once tolerated. Mm -hmm. That's and sure. I think it's important too, to, 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 demand if if you want um a certain level in your relationship it's okay to demand that too right it's okay to have a standard and say maybe the standard isn't where i'm at um mm -hmm. and that goes back to valuing who you are and valuing yourself so where can people find you i know you're all over facebook but give everybody your handles and all that fun stuff sure um my website is www.yourlovelifecoach.ca all one word, your love life coach, .ca, not com, but .ca. And you will find my Facebook links, my Instagram and YouTube links there. And obviously my Facebook is where I'm most active because I'm posting daily and I'm doing daily, mostly nightly lives as often mm. as I can. And that's where I do a lot of it. And a lot of it I'll export it out to Instagram or to YouTube. And, but you know, my home base is really through Facebook. And then I have my website. My, I think it's at at Bill Sheltima is the um, handle for the web or for Facebook. And ladies and gentlemen, uh, his posts are like several mm -hmm. mic drop moments through through each of them. Mm -hmm. It's uh, it's extraordinary. It's really beautiful how the way that you write and the way that you the way that you see women. Really, I mean, that, at the end of the day, that's how I think mm -hmm. women are are going. Oh my gosh, this guy gets it. And so guys, pay attention. Yeah. Bill gets it. Yeah. So maybe you want to learn some stuff there. <laughs> I know. I tell men that all the time. He said, just look at the reaction to my post from women and then you'll right. to see the correlation of the importance of why I 
why I'm saying the things I'm saying and how I'm saying them. Right. Um, they can also, also, I forgot to mention my book, Words Woman Love, can, is available on Amazon. Okay. And there are links on my, fa on my website, links directly to that too. So Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much for taking time with me today. I really appreciate it. And uh, I love your perspective on everything. So um, uh, it was a real you. treat. And uh, yeah, we'll talk great. soon. Yeah, absolutely. Have a wonderful thank time. So All righty. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.